In this video, I'm going to show you how you can go from tracking plot data to estimating the BGBB model. So recall from the previous video uh, that we now have data. It represents all of the purchase activity for customers that made their very first purchase in the week of January 1st, 1997. And we have over here, uh, for every week uh, thereafter, the total number of purchases that those customers made total amount that they spent on those purchases. And then over here, I added additional columns that represent the number of purchases per cohort member. And then over here, the average order value, which is just the total amount of spend divided by the number of purchases. So I got this other tab over here. And what it's showing us are the four parameters of the BGBB. And then we have this closed form expression for the cumulative number of repeat transactions per cohort member uh, by week. And then if you give me the cumulative transactions in each week, I can give you back the incremental transactions each week, you know, just how many we would expect in each particular week. It would just be the, the difference between cumulative acquisitions now versus cumulative acquisitions a week ago. And so we want to put in here is the actual incremental repeat transactions per cohort member. Got actual over here. And what we want to compare it to is this data over here. So I'm going to take this, and I am going to first hard code it. So I'm going to just paste values. And now that I pasted the values, I can copy and then special paste it as transposed. So I can put that over here. I'm going to highlight this. Actually, let me just highlight down over here grab all this. And so I'm now just creating a plot for actual versus expected incremental VP transactions. So this is again incremental repeat transactions per cohort member. And This expected, all this actual, and the way I'm going to estimate the model is I am going to minimize the the sum of the square differences between these two lines. I take this minus this, square it. And I just do that for every single time point. I could leave out a holdout period if I wanted to do predictive validation. Uh, I leave that to you as an exercise. So the sum of the squared error is just the sum of the squared errors. So I just highlight this over here. And now what I want to do is I want to go to Solver and have Solver help me take this SSE value, make it as small as possible by changing alpha, beta, gamma, delta. And the only constraint that we need with the BGPB is we know those are the, pra the parameters of beta distributions. So they all need to be strictly greater than 0. There we go. Great fit. And then the one other way that we can assess the fit is we can then get the actual cumulative repeat transactions. So one of the things that's always kind of a little annoying um, when we look at the incremental tracking plot is, especially for uh, companies where the cohorts are relatively small, this line gets a little bit noisy. And so what can help smooth things out is to convert this back into kind of the cumulative amount of repeat transactions uh, up to a certain date. And so if we just take the incremental data over here and we just kind of reaccumulate it, then that can give us back the actual cumulative transactions per cohort member. So I'm going to just take this plot, put it back over here. Instead of showing the, the incremental one, we can show the cumulative one. And uh, 
I'm just going to select my data. Now the expected is the expected cumulative curve, which is row number 10. So I'm just going to replace 11 with 10. And then for actual, I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to replace the actual incremental with the actual cumulative. So I'm going to replace row 12 with row 16. Look at that. Beautiful. Mm, love it. 